Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you all a brand new type of process of how to keep your prints adhered to your bed here. Especially if you're printing ABS, this is a lifesaver. It's super easy. There's little to no maintenance and upkeep in trying to keep this here. But uh, as you've seen in my previous how to print with ABS YouTube video, I used this acetone slurry goo. While that worked, it wasn't really as effective as this process which I'm going to be showing you all today here. First what we do, well we have to start off with our bed surface which will be glass on top of whatever bed we have for our printer here. So I have some uh, rather thick, uh, not only the thickest type of glass I have but pretty thick for this big printer here. This is probably the biggest or thickest one I could find here on a McMaster car. This is borosilicate glass. I would highly recommend you all pick up a sheet of borosilicate glass for this particular procedure, even for the previous one here or any type of uh, whenever you're trying to do any sort of 3D printing because it's going to give you the uh, flattest surface possible here. For the actual process here, we're going to need a couple more things besides this piece of glass. That is just going to be our foundation. What we'll need is we'll need a piece of PI. This is a certain plastic. It is uh, yellow in color or um, amber if you want to call it that and um, it is it has some very interesting properties here first off yeah it's just a standard piece of plastic it feels like polycarbonate or plexi a little bit more flexible than that not as brittle mind you but a really flexible type of plastic here very uh you know translucent now what we're going to be doing with this here is we're going to be adhering it to this glass plate we have on our printer bed now the way we're going to do it is with a adhesive sheet this is 3m 468 MP. This is a high temperature resistant adhesive sheet. Here it just comes in one single sheet cut and you can cut it to whatever size you need it. I personally I've tried using like a spray alternative to this here which I thought might be a little bit easier since this you have to kind of squeegee and make sure it doesn't bubble. However the spray was um, I don't know had a really weird consistency it's like spray foam almost wasn't really uh, the fine mist I was looking for. So now that we have all of our materials, now let's go ahead and see what kind of tools we'll be needing for this procedure here. First off, we're gonna need some sort of a measuring stick, ruler, what have you. And uh, we're also going to be needing uh, some sort of razor blade, exacto knife, or you could use like heavy duty scissors, maybe. Uh, I definitely recommend like a razor blade or exacto knife to start off with. And that's pretty much it here. So let's go ahead and flip on over to the workbench so we can go ahead and cut the PEI sheet to the shape of the glass piece that we have for the bed. What I wanna go ahead and do here first, cause this is super dirty, is I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this glass. I'll probably do it one more time before I actually go ahead and do the adhesive bit here just because it, uh, I just wanna make sure everything's super clean when we go to apply. Oh, and also I uh, forgot two other key things you will need for this here. Got a set of rubber gloves. They'll keep everything from getting fingerprints all over the uh, surfaces. And of course, you'll need something to uh, squeegee it on here. So some sort of squeegee type thing. I forgot what I used last time, or last time I tried to do this here. I might even have a video on my 3D printer vlog. Okay, I'm just gonna use something I 3D printed here. It's like an e-sig type deal. It has a rounded edge. Should work for us, for our application just fine. So now what we do is we uh, basically plot out our PEI sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our glass piece as a template. It looks like we're gonna lose a little bit on the edges. It's not a huge deal. Usually with 3D printers, you lose a little bit on the edges anyway from just other factors such as the binder clips that keep the actual glass attached to the aluminum bed like I have on my current printer. So now I'm just gonna score this edge real quick. If I can find my stinking X-Acto knife. Just gonna score it so I get a good guide. So let's see, can we cut this with scissors here? This plastic, like I said, you know, it is flexible. It's not brittle. So I don't think it'll, sh it shouldn't shatter on me. So that's a good thing. So let's see, can I cut it? Oh, matter of fact, you can. And it's pretty easy. So there we go. If you have a really good quality pair of scissors like these uh, Westcott's that I have here. Yeah, there you go. Easiest way. I think of my last bed surface that I did with the mother printer. I just used an X-Acto knife and scored it for like an hour, which, yeah, this, this method's a lot easier, a lot quicker too. So I'm gonna lose a little bit off the edges, no biggie. That should be relatively straight. Let's see here. I'm probably gonna trim that little fat off the end here. 
not a huge deal if you don't get the entire bed. Just probably don't want to be overlapping because that'll uh, give it an opportunity to peel off. Now in terms of uh, ABS pieces and adhesion, you'll want to uh, set your bed temperature. I have mine set to around 110 degrees Celsius. It's uh, pretty hot for normal applications. Usually it's like 90 or 100 for like the acetone type deal. But uh, yeah, I set mine to 110 with this stuff and it sticks well. So there we go. We got our sheet ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and get our adhesive 468MP sheet. Prep that real quick. Now this we wanna get exactly the same size as our PEI. Don't wanna have too much overlap or else things are just gonna get messy. I'm just gonna do a light little score and I'll finish it up with the scissors. So now we have our pieces cut out. So we have our PEI piece and our 3M uh, 468MP sheet here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna clean off everything one more time. I noticed there's some more like adhesive crap here. So now I went ahead and removed the protective film off of this. Now, if you notice that one side is uh, has like a matte finish to it, one side has a reflective finish to it. The reflective finish will be the part which will stick to the adhesive and then stick to the side, the side of the bed. The matte part will be facing up. The uh, reason for this is that the matte portion of it has a little bit more adhesion to it or properties to it. Um, of course, some people debate that, although in my personal experience, I've had more luck with the actual uh, matte side of it here. Now, another added benefit of the matte surface is that it will also look a lot more similar to the other surfaces of your print here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna get our 3M adhesive sheet and slowly but surely, We'll want to uh, peel it off. I like to use the X-Acto knife. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that. Slowly, but surely, we're just gonna, I'm just peeling it. And of course, you'll just wanna get your fingers as close to where you're actively peeling the thing. That's what we do. I kind of screwed up that corner, but no biggie. Now, hopefully I got it on relatively straight. I didn't completely screw it up. Just wanna press it down. And like I said, I'm sticking this on the shiny side. Press going in from out. Try to smudge out as many of these little air pockets as possible. Poke a few holes in each one of these like bigger air pocket guys. Try not to go too deep without, you know, piercing through the plastic letting the air out, squeezing them out a bit, getting them as small as I possibly can. I've got most of the little air pockets smudged out here. There's a few small, minor ones. You just gotta go as slow as you possibly can. Just be very, very patient. I like to just use the X-Acto knife just to kind of poke a few of these like slightly bigger air bubbles and that'll help me out in uh, putting this on the glass flat surface. <laughs> Okay, I think we're pretty good. Do our alcohol solution one more time. Then we'll go ahead and do our transfer. I'm gonna start with the cleanest corner here, which is this side. Now I'm just gonna use this guy. And it doesn't really matter if I rough this or scratch this up with this guy here. Not a, hunt, not a huge deal, because I'm gonna be doing that with the razor blade as I'm cleaning the surface off here periodically or after each print really. Hindsight probably should've went a little slower with it, but I think we'll be okay. Use this guy here, which is like used for dynamat and whatnot. We have our printer ready to go here. Just gonna go ahead and do like one final last clean. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to use these binder clips. I use at least four to six of them for this particular size of bed. Usually four will be decent for any standard size 3D print bed just enough to keep everything from sliding. Once I have everything in place, I'll go ahead and remove these top posts here and I'll put them in a safe place. They'll get in the way of the print head. So there you go, folks. That is how you install a PEI bed surface here. Go ahead and roll a few clips of it actually in action with some previous time lapses here. You wanna use set the bed to around 110 degrees Celsius if you're printing with ABS. Now before you even try to pry it off, you wanna let the bed cool down. Don't try to pull it off as soon as the print is finished when the bed is super hot. What you'll do is you will uh, warp the piece. It'll still be pretty hot. Wait until the bed cools down to where you can at least touch it 
without burning yourself. Now, once you're able to do that, you're good to go. You can go ahead and print off now, or pry it off. Now, what I recommend doing in terms of freeing the part is if it is a bit hard to do, uh, of course, like I said, I would definitely recommend using a raft for any of these things here because you may mar the bottom surface of whatever you're trying to pry off while doing this here. But the easiest way to pry something off if it's really, really sticky is you get under it with a razor blade like so, and that'll partially get you under, especially with the bigger piece, and then go under the razor blade with a uh, putty knife like this and then push it off and it should come off pretty easily. In terms of cleanup, scrape with a razor blade. Once you have all of the plastic debris taken off the actual print bed, you can go ahead and run a cloth with a bit of isopropyl alcohol over it. That will uh, enable the bed to be super clean, which will strengthen the adhesion on it. And of course, especially if you don't use the printer in a while or if um, before I start each print, I'll just rub it down again with the isopropyl alcohol in the rag. If you do run into bed adhesion issues, um, usually you can just run some steel wool over the actual bed here, or I just simply just use these razor blades and scrape over it and make sure there's no debris or any sort of, any sort of dirt or anything that's on the surface of the PEI bed. Replace these razor blades often. A few little scrapes and scratches on the bed aren't a world ending deal. It'll still be, it'll still be usable. I definitely recommend getting a fresh razor blade if your razor blade is nicked or damaged. And of course, like I said earlier, um, you all, I highly recommend using rafts for your prints. Of course, you do waste a bit more material, but that is a trade off for, of course, just a better, mostly warp free, um, printing process here. I'll go ahead and end it here, folks. I just want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video if you liked it, and check out some other videos on one of the sides of the screens. I never can get that right. And have a great day.